Welcome back to another Ishin Novice 3 video. This one, it's been a while since I uploaded about this device. Uh, right now it's actually in the other room um, and it's taken apart. I have to replace it, the antennas I was flying whenever it was cold outside. But that's not what this video is about. This video is going to be about the Ishin controller. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the antenna that comes with it, which is an internal antenna. I don't really know what it looks like, but because I have a QX7, this controller is now kind of a secondary controller. And whenever I originally had bought the Novice 3, I, uh, but whenever it was being shipped, the three months that it took to get me to get to me from Banggoods, I uh, bought this this antenna to put in the controller because everybody was talking about how bad the range was. Anyway, the range isn't the best thing with this. This is the worst part about the kit, like I said in the review. But I'm hoping today that we're going to be able to make it better by putting this antenna in. This is something that I just found on Banggoods as well. I believe it's a 2.5 or maybe a 5 dBi antenna. And we're going to see if it can improve the range of this thing. Right now, I have it hooked up to my Mobula 6. All my other drones are hooked up to my QX7, but I rebound it to this. So hopefully I can give you guys an understanding of how far this thing goes I'm trying to think here on this on the original antenna comparative to the new antenna so I'm gonna get that shot set up real quick and let you guys see what the RSSI is just whenever I'm a couple feet away the RSSI is on the top the right right here it's at 73 right now and we are linked up to this controller Mo Mo model one I don't have it named but that's it's linked up to the Mobula 6 which is right over here and we're going to be flying this guy with a GoPro just shoved in the screen here. And I'll have to fly off of that as well, so don't judge my flying. But we're going to be just paying attention to that RSSI signal, and we're just going to fly directly into my kitchen. All right, I can fly it from here. Just got to back you guys up just a little bit, see if you can see still. Yeah. All right, we'll see, we're, already, we're right behind us, and we're already sitting in the 40s. Uh, it wouldn't be like that on the QX7. So we're gonna go right into here, into the kitchen. And we're already in the 30s. You just saw a dip, 34, 35. Typically, when we're in here with the QX7, we're sitting around anywhere in the 40s. So this is my apartment, by the way. I know you guys haven't seen this footage yet. But uh, yeah, we'll do maybe a house tour. Probably not, maybe I will. I'm definitely gonna see more of this because I'm buying goggles with the DVR. But anyway, back to the Thing at hand, we're looking at the RSSI signal, 50s in the bedroom, 40s, 30s on the way back wall, 35, 34, so 33, pretty low. Honestly, never saw 30s in this apartment with the QX7, so, and I'm facing, as you can see me here, facing towards my computer, uh, completely away from the controller, hiding it with my stomach and my body. And we're just going right into here, and it's tipping into the 30s. All right, so that's that's enough information to figure out the RSSI level. Now we're going to do the same test after we replace the antenna, and we'll see if we do any better. Here's the controller. We're just going to turn it over on its stomach, take out the battery. And then in order to take this off, you got to take these pads out the back here. Pretty easy, they're nice and soft. Set those guys aside. And then I think there's just one, two, three, four, five. Looks like just six total screws to get in there. Hopefully this thing reaches far enough down. It doesn't feel like it does actually. Alright, I should have got a different screwdriver. I'll be right back. Note to anybody out there that's trying to do this modification that these holes on the middle right here are super deep and you're gonna need a screwdriver and they're super narrow as well. It's going to be able to fit down there and grab a hold of them. All right, when you finally get to this point, so I'm sure I just skipped over what I just went through, getting these much longer than you would expect screws to be out of there, which is probably gonna be a pain to get back on, but we got it off to the back and this right here 
that little connection right there looks like our antenna connection. So we're going to want to undo that and plug in this one. Now what I'm planning on doing is routing the antenna up through the top, hopefully. So I'm going to unplug these triggers so I can take this top off fully. We can work in here without any obstruction. Alright. Now that we got it apart. I mean, I don't know where that actual antenna is in there. This black part goes around. Oh, I just unplugged it that easily. And it looks like it goes under the circuit board to some kind of like dipole antenna, looks like. But I'm not even gonna bother taking that out of there. I'm just gonna leave this wire hanging. All right, let's see what happens. I realize that this might not change the outcome whatsoever. If you're like a professional FPV pilot and you're like looking at me like I'm an idiot. It has to be wrong. Oh, there it goes. Not the wrong one. Just took, just took some mingling. All right, <laughs> you will see this video. All right, finally got that connector on there. Uh, was not easy, it was a lot harder than I thought. So now we have to try to wire this and then hopefully figure out a way to stick it out the top like this. I mean, I don't know how we're gonna get that to sit there. guys watch this I'm gonna get this thing back together and get it to a point where it's not looking like this and we're gonna see if that antenna works so I'll see you guys when this thing's put back together because this is gonna take I can tell it's gonna take probably 15 minutes of my life so I got the antenna on finally it's uh, just attached by the wire it's just that little plug in there so it will definitely pull off really easily so I can't really pick it up or do anything with it but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see if it turns on first and see that if it connects to the drone. And then if it does, we're going to take it for a flight into the same path into the kitchen and see if it does any better. So let's get the battery in here. Oh, and I looked up online uh, exactly where I got it. I'll leave a link down below if it works, obviously. But this isn't made for controllers necessarily. This is made for a monitoring router. I don't even know what that is. I'm assuming it's like a router for Wi-Fi or something like that. But it's 2.4 gigahertz, 6 dBi. So not what I said at the beginning of the video. I said, I think it said it's 2 or 5 or something. It's a 6 dBi, 50 ohm wireless Wi-Fi. So let's see if this uh, even works. I have no idea if this is going to work or not. Powered up. So far, so good. I mean, I don't expect anything bad to happen here. We're not going to know if anything worked until we get the drone plugged in. So there's that. We're going to throw this 350 milliamp G and B battery on here, which I just got, which actually gives my Mobula like four and a half minutes of flight. It's a little heavier. Totally worth it though. All right, let's see what the RSSI level pops up to immediately. Okay, it's sitting at 70, 71. We were, I think we were like in the 80s when we were sitting here before. So, so far it's not a promising sign. Oh, it says bad RX. Do you see that on the screen? Disarm. Bad RX. All right. Uh, is it even going to let us arm? Oh, 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 oh. Yes, it is. No, oh, that was just because I had the arm switch on. All right, let's see if we can do this. And... All right, remember, we were in the 30s when we were in the kitchen before. And we are the exact same we are in the 40s 30s okay now i have the antenna laying on the ground right now let me disarm that real quick and show you that i have the antenna laying on the ground like this 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick it up and see if that increases the, the RX or the RSSI level. So let's arm that again so we can see the RSSI. So it's a 37. Pick it up straight. It does go up. Oh, then it drops completely. Oh, that's the video signal, though. I don't know why that happened. Um, I need some way to hold this antenna up so I can fly like that. All right, the antenna's in an upright position now. Um, and I know it's dark in there. I should turn the light on, but with the antenna in the upright position, actually, you know what? We are up in the 50s, okay? That is a significant increase from where we were before. If you guys remember in the earlier flight, when we were over there in this back wall, we were sitting in the 30s. Now we are hitting 50s. We're still dropping down into the 30s, but I think I could definitively say with the antenna pointing upwards, just getting that top antenna. So now we're flying. I'm going to try to get a view with the mobile in here. The antenna is popping up, as you can see right there. And that is giving us 20 RSSI points higher in the worst reception area with this controller. See, we're staying in the 50s back here. So, you know what? I take what I said back before. As long as you have this thing positioned in the upright position, I do believe this. This will give you slightly better range. But So, there it is. Uh, I think what I basically have to say about this to conclusion, and should you buy this $3.99 cent antenna basically a four dollar antenna i would say yeah that's a good it's a good investment if you only have this controller and you have the equipment that comes with the novice e-sheen then i think that this controller is the weakest part of that kit if you ever if you watched my previous video whenever i uh reviewed the entire th novice 3 kit i said that this controller was the weakest link and i do believe that this helps it a little bit it's not going to help with some of the other issues that this controller has but as far as the range issues um, this will improve it slightly. Now, the thing is, is that it's not going to improve the range like I thought. I thought that the 6dBi 50 ohm was going to be a more powerful... There's ways that you can manipulate antennas to give you higher dBi, which will basically change the way the frequency is coming out of the antenna. So in the frequency spot here... Oh, I just got distracted. So it'll change the frequency coming out the change the shape of the frequency and I'm not sure if the 6 dBi is actually a higher dBi than the antenna that comes with this but it's going to give you more manipulation of where that frequency comes out of so you're going to be able to point it in a position where the quad will be better receptive to the frequency that's coming out of the the transmitter so in my opinion I do think that the the purchase is worth it the upgrade is pretty easy it's just a couple screws it's a little bit you know a little bit precarious in positions it's kind of hard to get the case back on and get off, but once you do that, it's just one clip that you got to clip in there, and you're ready to fly within a couple minutes. It only took me about 15 minutes to do this repair, so or this upgrade. So I definitely would suggest you do it. If this is the only equipment that you have, it'll definitely make your flying experience better. So if you guys like this video, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button. I have more videos coming out about the Ishii Novice 3 in the future, in the very near future. We have a repair on the the Ishii Novice 3. We're going to be putting in um, other antennas on that, and I'll show you how to do that. And I'll also show you how to change the VTX if any of you guys need to know how to do that. So please hit the subscribe button, and I will see you on the next one. And I will, and I will see you on the next one. All right. How do you end a video? This is how I'm going to end a video.